comment on non-agenda items? Hearing none, changes or additions to the agenda. Mr. Road Commissioner, what update do you have of anything for us? Uh, just about the truck with the bad motor, which is just that I've talked to them and they're working with us to get And then is JD? J and B International. And um, I have, I'm hoping to get answers by the end of this week. So when you get answers, do you need to have somebody on the board to run a, this by if it's going to cost money? What do you, what do you need from us? Uh, well, it depends on how much money it is. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, if, it's, if it's half of what they estimated, then I think I can just take that out of my budget. So you, it was estimated like it's 32. 32. So if it's like 15 or 16? Right. I think I've got authority yeah. to, to, to do that. Yeah, because yeah, there's maintenance. So that would get us one more winter out of that truck, and then we would trade it. Right, and I would put it in low use. I wouldn't put a lot of miles on it mm -hmm. if this happens, just so that we don't have this repair again. Yeah, get that mm -hmm. way on that same road. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that that's, that's what's going to happen. It's, I haven't really got an answer from them yet. So right. I, I'm hoping to have some more answers this week. I've also been communicating with uh, Charlie Boys, which also sells Western Stars. They're the ones across the pond, right? Yes. Yeah. And they offered to come and take a look at our truck to give us, put a trade number together. Right, I think In that, case that was, uh, right. you know, if that's what we had to do. Right. Because he said that he was interested in it and giving us a trade. Of course, it's, the money's not going to be there with, with a bad motor. Right. Yeah, true. But whether he's got something up his sleeve, maybe he's got a motor himself that he can throw in it, and, you know, but it could be good to have that that trade number mm -hmm. in, our, in our hat so that we can know, you know, if it's a feasible thing or what. Yeah, I think it's worth having are. the conversation, even given whatever this other guy says, you know, it's still worth, I think, the conversation. Right, right. And my husband's been buying all of his trucks and equipment from Ron Charlie Boys for more than 30 years. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Very reputable establishment. Yeah, I've heard of Charlie Boys before. I didn't realize they were in, across yeah. the lake. Mm -hmm. and well, it's in Milton. But the yeah. Western Star operation. Oh, that's right. Yeah, because right. JB is the Western Star for Vermont. Mm -hmm. Right. So he also said that another option that he could provide for us is switching the equipment. So if we decided to buy a new cabin chassis, he mm -hmm. could take the equipment off of our old truck and put it right on the new truck in house. They can do that right at their own facility. That's Charlie Boys? Charlie Boys. So that's, I've asked, I've asked him to give me a quote for that also, mm -hmm. just to compare the quote that I got from, from H.P. Fairfield. Yeah, okay. For switching the equipment. So uh, it's really unknown which way we're going with this. I, I, I wish I had more to tell you. Right. I'm, I'm really trying to work with J&B so that they stay on the, on the friendly side. Right. Um, so he assured me that he would have answers this week. Yeah, we don't want to burn bridges. Right. Well, we've done a lot of business with them, yeah. and, and and they've been good to us. Yeah. And this is just kind of a hurdle that we've got to get over, and hopefully we can do it in a peaceful man manner. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure they're dealing with this with other trucks of the same yeah. issues. Yeah, they are. Yeah, and it's not, it's not just international. There's other brands that have the same issues. But yeah. We just have... We've been lucky to have a to pick a week one. I mean, it right. was just that year. It was, you know, yep. between 2010 and 2012, those were really weak years yep. for that particular motor. So, All righty. Well, uh, thank you. Yeah. So, mud season's over. Mud season's about over. Yeah, we're still hauling a little bit of gravel to some of the shaded wet spots. Yeah. Um, but the graders are out. And it's going to rain this week, so it's going to slow us down. But trying to get the main drags first and, yeah. and uh, we're getting a lot of thumbs up already so good people yeah. are happy yeah. and as you can see coming in maybe 
there's dust flying around already. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So it goes like from you know, it goes already. from mud and slop to to fighting dust. Yeah. yeah. So. But we've got chloride left over from last year, and that's not going to be a problem. So Great. When we need it, we'll get it on. Good. Yep. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Very good. Hard work. All right. Is the beaver in the road over here? You got your gun with you? Uh, I might have a gun in my truck out there. <laughs> <laughs> Is that allowed on my own time? I know. I have a Maybe, yeah. On your own time? Right. <laughs> It was right in the middle of the road that it flopped over the over in the oh, really? brook. Yeah. Oh, really? Uh, huh. Um, breeding time. You guys see a lot of turtles and the salamanders and all that stuff this time of year? Pretty soon. Yeah, turtles will a little bit later. Yeah. They'll start coming to the road to lay their eggs. Yeah. 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 Turtles. <laughs> um, I love all those turtles. Yeah, I was thinking that actually about that last year. The painted turtles come across uh, Sada Pond Road yeah. right by the forges every year and they get squished laying their eggs oh, yeah. and right. I was thinking if we could dump a pile of sand all on that edge there and they could go and it hit the sand on the pond side Yeah. or if the neighborhood could do that we could help out and then they would put the eggs in there instead of going on the road yeah uh, yeah so that's about all I got to do as far as okay. the roads all right, thank you. Um, thank you. I, the oh, green up day. Green up on, day, I'm involved on, in. Right. So, green up day, I guess to, there's no update from Toby because he's not here. Um, Who's our green up coordinator? It is Joanne. Uh, yeah, I can. She's working. Yeah. She's, Jamie's involved. I think her name is Jane or Joanne. Uh, or Joanne. Joanne. Yes. Yeah, that's she'll it. Get the hell here. Yeah. Yeah, so there's going to be two pickup sites, one in Maple Corner, one at Moscow Woods, right? They've actually formed a volunteer committee. Yes. And I'm on that committee. Oh, good for you. <laughs> so tell us what's going because on with the committee. I, because I've always done Green Up Day, so right. I, I, was, I was... Perfect uh, choice. Yeah, so we're going to have two locations, one in where it always is in East Callis and one mm -hmm. at Maple Corner store. And we're going to have ice cream this year. Oh, Ben and Jerry's going to donate? Uh, no, we're going to purchase it. Uh, which I was volunteered to go and pick the ice cream up. <laughs> <laughs> what? Tough job as somebody's got to do it, right? Tired, right. <laughs> um, so we're going to have ice cream there. Uh, Joanne is buying t shirts for the volunteers to wear, wear uh, for us in Green Up nice. t shirts. Um, is that out of the grant money? Yeah, yeah, I think some some pocket of money. Yeah, there's like $400 or something, I think. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, I guess Rob Richard has donated his truck again to set in Maple Corners. So that's good. He'll, yeah. meet, he'll meet me over there in East Callis, and we just transfer the trash from one truck to the other right. uh, that day. And that day, you take, do you take tires that day? We um, do. If, on the side of the road. if we find them alongside the road, if people find them on the road, we do have, we do take them. Yeah. Okay. But I mean, we, it's hard to tell. But you know, if yeah. it looks like it's come out of somebody's basement or garage, then we're we're turning them away. But yeah, it's hard to tell. Most of them we take them. And then yeah, we've always gotten a grant for that also, which pays for getting rid of the tires. Right. Which not every year we have enough tires to make it worth it. So it seems like. Donna remembers it's like every other year. You're right. You it wasn't that big of an expense. Right, right. Yeah. So I let them build up and then yeah. I have a guy come and take them yeah. you know, when there's enough to make it worth it. Um, so yeah, I guess we should hope for decent weather on Green Up so. and get a lot of people out there. Yeah. And there was, they were talking about having a little competition too and I, I didn't I didn't get all the low down on that. Yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, she, I think she was talking about a raffle or something. A raffle, yeah. Yeah. For people who bring the most bags of green up. Yeah. So, I guess the store is giving something to raffle, and then there was some baked goods going to be made as as gifts or, or prizes. Yeah. Yeah. So, <coughs> yeah, I'm waiting for them to hit me up for baked goods. Oh, maybe maybe you'll be the lucky one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
so yeah, I mean that's that's about all I know about the green up. Okay, good. It's going to happen. We're going to have two town trucks over here, mm -hmm. one for tires and one for, for the trash. Nice. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be good weather. Ice cream, ice cream, ice cream, eating eating weather. right, and not cold. Yeah, right, right, right. right. right so. Where are you gonna put? I have ice cream at both places. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, they they asked me if I could buy two different two tubs of it, so one for each place. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, nice. And they want cones too, so I gotta buy cones. <laughs> so instead of having dishes and spoons and right, whatnot, I'm just, yeah, I guess that just makes dish sense. it into a cone, and right. people can take it. And like, if you don't want the cone, the birds will eat it. Yeah. Right. So I have a question, a little, little bit off topic, but has to do with your safety. Uh, what did you experience with ticks last year? How much for ticks? Uh, there was a lot of ticks last year. Yeah. I didn't didn't account, encounter them during Green Up Day, but you well, know, I'm just taking the road crew in general. Oh, I'm through the summer. summer. You guys get much exposure? I've been doing brush. Didn't really see them. Okay. Cool. Um, I mean, I didn't have any on me, and I didn't hear if the guys have any else, any on us either. But um, they're out there. Yeah. yeah, they're already saying they're, on their, they're yeah. out now. Look, and the reason I just asked, I was in Bennington last week and just walking through a field, I'm not kidding, I was covered with deer ticks. <gasps> I pulled 12 off, wow. oh my God. like little guys, and then I did it again. There was yeah. another 10, and then I found oh, one and yeah. went to the bathroom. And, so I don't know if it's, wow. at some point it's going to migrate up here. To, <laughs> yeah, uh, right. So I just right. I want to hear you guys pretty well educated on ticks and what yeah. to do. and yeah. Speaking of ticks, I, it's a little off topic, but I, and then I'll go. <laughs> uh, John has something for you. Oh, he does. Okay. <laughs> uh, the other morning, I got up to go to work, and I looked out my door. There was this huge moose sitting right, like five feet from the corner of my house. Wow. So I'm like, wow, that's, good. that's really weird. It's good. But it didn't look super healthy. Uh, so I was like watching it. I was like, thing ain't racked and right. right. So uh, I stayed a little bit longer to keep watching it, and it was just like very docile and. You could see where it had laid down in several different places, and the rain were blood. Yeah, it was, mm. it was blood. Ew. It turns out it was ticks. The thing was just infested with oh, these oh, really? yeah. moose ticks that are big as the, 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 the winter huge. ticks. You saw them? Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, they're huge. And I so you can see them hanging I didn't give it a thought. I called the game warden. I said, "There's a moose at my house, and it's acting really weird. You ought to come take a look." Yeah, yeah, okay. So then my wife calls me at work later and says the moose got scared of my cows because it went down by my cows. The cows are going to, you know, yeah. this is my place. Right. So the thing yeah. ran down towards the road and was laying in the middle of the road. Oh. So then, okay, now this is a health hazard. hazard. It's a hazard yeah. for people traveling. So I called him back and the gate warned back and said, you know, you got to get here. So he came and took care of it. But he, he's the one that told me that it was ticks. He dispatched it? Or, you know? Um, did he kill it? Yeah, he yeah he did. Oh. In fact, I heard the shot from the from the town garage, and it was. You know, mm -hmm. But thing. that's where the blood was coming was from these ticks. Right. Because oh. he said they pop like grape, not to gross anybody yeah, out. Right. They, they lay down and about the size of a grape, oh and when gosh. they lay down, it pops, and, it, oh, and that's yeah. where the blood comes from. Poor thing. So yeah, I mean, it was just you could oh. tell it was not healthy. It was like it could hardly hold its head up. And, oh. Oh. So it was bad. I mean, it was a great sight to see it moves at my house, but yeah. at the yeah, same time, it was, you know, I wish it was in better, better shape and yeah. was able to run off into the woods. Yeah, like it's supposed to. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So that was kind of a sad story. Yeah. And it's all related to ticks, but they're yeah. here. They are definitely here. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, I give my dogs yeah. oral medication. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we do, too. Yeah. yeah. But people can't take it. I don't know why they don't have something for people. We could take the Revecto for people. Mm, yeah, you might not want to. No. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, All right. So, so, John's got something for you. Okay. What do you want to do with the hall? I don't know if you all want to hear about the gravel. <laughs> but we're on, we're on town hall update, so this is perfect. Oh, sure. You, you can take it with you. And I think okay. my notes are kind of clear, and we can talk about it now. It has to do with a portion of the town hall project, which is outside of Earthwork stuff, it's access to the building. And, uh, and it turns out the only improvements, the only work we can do on the building, which uh, which can be paid for with this grant we're going for, is work that happens after September 1st. This is the 
Vermont Cultural mm -hmm. Facilities, yeah. Vermont Council on there, it's Cultural Facilities Grant. So, so the trick is because it's not when that, things are invoices, it's kind of for, like, for accessible mm -hmm. stuff. So any meaningful accessibility stuff has to happen like after September 1st or right? out of count. So you can include demo. Right. But we don't we don't, can't wait to demo. So Yeah. Right. We have things that are gonna happen before September 1st and things that are gonna happen after that will right. feed into the grant. Well we have a whole pile of town hall update stuff thanks to the dynamic duo. Yeah, <laughs> so the trio. Right. It's the, it's the, the trio. The, yeah, the trio. Yeah. I won't say that. <laughs> well, you're in there. You just got things out. Well, oh, all this all is there. Just mm -hmm. So we have. We got, we got but John, maybe you want to take them off to the side. <laughs> yeah, okay. And yeah, if you're done with me, fine. Yeah. John, I yeah. can step outside. So. Well, except for we need John for the town hall update. Okay. I, I don't well, even have to go over it. Why don't you check it out first? I'll check it out and then give you a call or something. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Fair enough. All, all right. right. Thanks, Al. Thank you, Big Hut. Thank you, Carol. See ya. All right, you want to start with CPG? Which one do you want to, where do you want to start yeah, with the uh, update? That is a revised um, contract. Right. They've done the first segment, which was and it, pro promotional yeah, materials documents. and everything that we put out for town meeting. And now we are working on um, fundraising. So we have a donor list that we're going to ask for money. We have a list of foundations that we're reviewing. And then this portion of of her contract is helping us with that. So yeah, the documents are in the Google folder, thanks to Katie. Um, and the increase is. Well, she, from, only, she will only charge us what, what she actually right. does. So the we've paid CPG forty three fifty two so far. The original contract was estimated at fifty eight hundred. Um, but she agreed to do some more fundraising activities to help out. So she's looking at a new estimate of thirty-five dollars to $3,800. So I don't know if people had a chance to review this. And she, there's nothing to sign tonight, but I think we're looking to see if the board will authorize me to sign it when it's ready. Well, it is ready. I mean, you, she, you have she, it? Oh, I guess there's no sign. There's no signature page because I printed it off. Oh, right here. For town of Callis, right here. Oh, there. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, it is... I think it's down there. Do you remember Katie? Yeah, I looked at it too. The word document? Um, not the facility. No, that's the RFP piece. It might be, wait a minute. Project. Add addendum. It's that one. 2018. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. that one. Because we already had signed on with Christine Graham. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it seems like we could really use her help with some more of this. She can do a, some database search to look at potential donors to see what they've donated to in the past to see what their interests are, whether it's you know municipal or historic or cultural, um, which would be helpful. And then the foundation list too, because foundations if they give us money. Is there a signature page on that? Um, I can, I've got it here, Don. <clears throat> but you said it's on the second page, page, right? Right there, right? Here it is. Because it says January 24th. I think that's the old one. Okay, do you have a new one? Uh, this is... This has... But this is the new... Um, that's yeah, the new figures, right? Page on it. And that's what happened last time. There wasn't a signature page. So the board authorized me to sign it, and I signed it at one of the town um, hall meetings. I think she kind of tacked this onto the last one. Yeah. <clears throat> There's no signature page for the addendum. There's a signature page for the original. Right, which we already did that. 
So we may have to ask her for <coughs> a new signature page with the. Let me just look at the file over here. And see. Only Shana, Shana's actual time will be built. No foundation research or fundraising planning will be initiated until the result of the town meeting is vote is known. So we already did that. Yep. And really, it's the first page of this document that is the addendum. Right. That is the new piece. Mm -hmm. Now that's old stuff. So yeah, because this is dated three twenty two eighteen. The first page, Donna. Mm -hmm. And on the first page, like three quarters of the way down, it talks about the the, the difference in the costs. Right. <clears throat> I mean, if you want to, you can just sign the bottom right there. Yeah. Just sign this. Yeah. Right? I mean, she's already she's already started doing the work for me. <clears throat> so, does anybody have any questions? That Questions. All right. So, would the board like to make a motion to authorize me to sign this addendum? So moved. Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All righty. One document down. Okay. What else is on the list? The. Um, if you if you give that to me, I will scan it to her and then give the original to Sandra to the, the file. Okay. <clears throat> Okay, here you go. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, next. Um, the RFP, and this was this is a big deal, the RFP. Um, Scott worked on it. Um, we asked Jim to review it, and we're glad that we did because he came up with some helpful advice, some attachments to be used. Scott, do you want to? The best thing he did was make it a lot shorter. <laughs> it's really good. It's, it, and it's, I think this is, it's kind of important because uh, well, maybe we'll be doing a number of these as time goes on, and so this will be sort of our model for, for right. RFPs. Um, it's, it's got the basic information about who we are, what, mm -hmm. we, what we need, and um, what, our, what our timetable is. Um, and he covers all the stuff about insurance and independent contractors and all the stuff that the town has to be careful of. And liability. Liability and all that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So. I, I just feel very, uh, quite comfortable having him spend, spend some, having him having spend some time on it. Right. You know, I think it's about as good as we can get it. Um, right. This one was. Well, <laughs> this one is for the um, to put out RFPs to lift the building. To lift the building, yeah. And yeah. lower. It yeah, right, down. right, and lower it back down. No, we're just gonna leave it up there. <laughs> <laughs> Suspended new <Right>. town <laughs> <laughs> The floating town hall. And so the idea is for this to go out. I'd love to see it's able to put it out on the eighth of May. A week or so from now. Right. Then take then spend two weeks. Let it. Sit out there for two weeks. Um, have a return date of the day before our usual Wednesday town hall committee meeting. Right. Then hopefully uh, the the returns would be there on Wednesday morning. We could take a look at them, think about them, make a recommendation for the select board on the meeting that would happen the Monday after that. In I think it's the, probably your last meeting in May. Yeah, I think though. I, I read this. Believe it or not. And I think it said that the select board was going to open. Sealed proposal will be accepted. Proposals delivered by email. It is anticipated that the select board will select the preferred proposal. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, so that's different. We control so, the first one. So. Right. But the committee could open the bids, is what you're suggesting? Yeah. Yeah. We'll open it up. And make a recommendation. Make a recommendation. Yeah. Do you have any sense of? How many people might respond to the RF? How many companies might respond to the RFP? Two. Mm -hmm. It's two. There's Messier and there's Rogers, right? Right, but yeah, but who knows? I mean, I mean there might be other companies out there that we're not aware of. So yeah. two weeks definitely gives you enough time for them to come in and do inspections mm -hmm. as required for the yeah. RFP. Yeah, you know, and we'll put this around 
um, enough to, to be diligent about it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we'll advertise it statewide. Um, and I put it, uh, put it yeah. around in the town. And that, that's sort of the form for the, for the whole project, really, is that we hope all the contractors will be fairly local. Right. Um, and that we, we, want, we definitely want to give uh, preference to local contractors. So you know, I may get right. out there on the on the internet from somebody else putting it there, but I think we'll probably post it around town and on, um, maybe from put it on the website. Website, probably. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So do we? What does the board need to do with this? Anything? Just and kind of authorize authorize me to sign it. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. Yeah. Well, if we'll we got copies to the two people we know about. Right, and this needs to get put in final, maybe for Wednesday morning, and I could sign it Wednesday morning. Um, How do you want to do it? The RFP is just a, a document that just goes out. Right, but this um, still yeah. says draft and stuff on it. Well, that's yeah, the contract. Just the that's the draft contract, which you know may. Oh, Jim okay. just sort of volunteered that. I think he had it in his files and said, "Oh, I'll oh, it. okay, I'll gotcha. That gotcha. That's not part of the RFP. It's just the first two pages." Right? Okay, so we don't need to sign anything. No, 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 no. Okay, very good. But then once we get somebody, we'll definitely want to do a yeah. contract, and that'll be another process. We'll spend some time again with Jim and, um, and with whoever's the chosen. Yeah. Yeah. Whoever's the chosen one. Whoever, yeah. Okay. It's a big deal. It is a big deal. This is really happening. I know. <laughs> all those years. I know. No. I know. It's really happening. Yeah. Put a good building under that roof, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anything else from the board on the RFP? I mean, Cliff and I have kind of been involved in you know, every Wednesday morning. Every Wednesday morning. Yeah, right and early. Denise's favorite meeting of the month. <laughs> and I made it. I, there's only missed only missed one. Oh, easy to yeah. yeah. That's good, Denise. I know. Cool. Wow. Good for you. Yeah. I think person. Denise has the best attendance. Denise and Donna. All right. So. Some. That's okay. Great. Thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for working on it. You know, I've set out RFPs for CLG grants and got nobody, so <laughs> again, we kind of yeah. keep holding our breath on little of May. Okay. Vermont Arts Council. Donna has put in countless hours on this mm -hmm. document. What I liked about reading like the RFP thing and this and stuff is the history. Oh, it's yeah. really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. You know about the yeah. that was used for um, cultural and stuff uses way yeah. back. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. they did dinners and it was really it's really interesting. I found one typo. I emailed it to you. I already found that. Okay. Thank you, though. Good. And so this is. I mean, this is evolving. It's. Um, what we're working on right now is we have to have expenses of $60,000. And so we're going with the lift as the big money piece. And then what Alfred's working on is gravel and the ramp that goes, the, the um, wheelchair accessible ramp, and then there's the bathroom. Right. So in that write-up, some of that stuff may be thrown out. Like we're not going to talk about the bathroom if we can get to 60000 with just the accessible entrance and the lift. Right. Bathroom's a bigger budget piece. Than yeah, but that, that's what we're, so anyway, um, Lisa Ryan's coming to our house on Wednesday at 3.30. She has, I've sent her a PDF of, of all the pages of the grant and we're gonna sit down and go through it. Right. Um, but we're still fine tuning the numbers and actually what are we gonna ask for? And it has to be submitted by May 1st. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to submit this by the weekend. Yeah, okay. I don't want to you know, come into any computer glitches or anything. Oh, no. No, that would not be And I'm not sure, and maybe Scott knows, um, I, I, which what Denise would sign. I don't, I don't see anything on the website about select board signature. Oh. Is it? Well, the, the CLG grants, those are the ones I'm familiar with, because mm -hmm. Denise has to sign the grant application form which CLG gives us and the budget. I'll ask um, Lisa when she comes on Wednesday. Yeah. Because yeah. this is all um, on their website. There's nothing. And you submit everything electronically, right? Yeah, it's all in, it's all in there now. Just right. Just have to push the button. 
and we got some really good people for the um, key individuals. Oh, for the what? For the key individuals. Yeah, I asked Lisa who should we list. Yeah. And those are the, are yeah. the ones that she suggested. Perfect. So I guess the select board just needs to authorize you to sign, to sign it, if there's something to sign. It may not be online, but I'll find out from Lisa on Wednesday. Yeah, because we don't have electronic signature stuff, right? I don't even see a spot to sign. Mm -hmm. Huh. Mm -hmm. I didn't see anything. Yeah. So. Does the board have any questions about the this um, Vermont Arts Council grant and that it's for the handicap accessibility right. no, stuff? That's good. Yep. I read it. It was beautiful. Yeah, you did a <laughs> really <laughs> nice, well done. nice job. John and I met with uh, Bob Weber here today. He's the lift person. Yeah. Um, he made some suggestions and improvements, right? Well, the more expensive, but. <laughs> when we met with the uh, Vermont Council of the Arts regarding the grant for accessibility, David Cheeps and I always saw that we knew that making the performance platform, the stage, mm -hmm. accessible was, was there. We knew it was kind of there. But we were hoping if we didn't pretend it wasn't there, it would go away. <laughs> out of sight, out of mind? It didn't. When we went to meet with uh, Michelle Bailey, Vermont Council on the Arts, we had some questions for her. We should got to deal with it sooner rather than later. Oh. And the there stage is, itself? There's no temporary kind of, someone happens to be in a wheelchair and you want to use the stage, you can't scramble around and pull the lift real quick. You got it. So, um, hmm. Well, the, the most economical solution is the lift we have goes from the lower level to the second floor level. The current one? Or the new one the we're in. But then that same lift, you get in it and go up another 20 inches, and then there's a side door. So it's got a front door, but also a side door. And you go up that extra oh. 20 inches, the side door opens up, and then you can wheel right onto the stage. And then, and then oh. what Bob Weber said, if for those of you who read the application, yeah. I talk about using the lift to carry chairs. Yeah, you, yeah. You can't, you can't, you can't use do it that. that. Why not? Oh. No, you can't say you. There's a, there will be a that. sign that says you can't can't use but it. We're for that. Gonna, yeah. Oh, we know we're going to use it for it's that. Much much to use <laughs> for it, so but I got to take that out of the grant application. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh boy. So, Live and learn, huh? Space. Well, it's like everybody you talk to, they, yeah. you learn some new piece Hi there, of information. Welcome. How you doing? Good, how are you? Yeah. Good. We're just getting finishing up with our agenda mm -hmm. item here. So just quickly, John did a schedule, and I, I typed it up and said to him that. Yeah, this one, this one here, is this right? a, Yeah, oh, yeah. This, is, this is reality. That's what it looks like. <laughs> Wait a minute, before we do that, if there's something that the board needs to yeah. sign Jeez. for this council, you yeah. want to have a motion authorizing me to do it, and I'll just... Yeah, so moved. Second. Yeah, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Yeah, this is quite the to-do list. I mean, <laughs> this is huge well, one of the amount of work I've done. Do this was when John and Scott met with Ernie, and that kind of started the schedule. Yeah. Um, but then also we had to determine what is going to happen before September 1st and after when we have the grant money. And right. what can happen before rehearsals for the play start? What, yeah. what happens, what ha can't happen until the last day of the play? So yeah, there are these things in there that are organized and scheduled for us. The, the sad fact is we're already a month behind and $2,000 so over budget. budget. We haven't even started yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you say that? Every time we talk to somebody, they say, oh, 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 oh. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we got to stop talking to people from out of town. There That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and uh, what was, uh, what we all came to understand at the last town hall meeting, and, and I don't know if you guys know this yet, but there aren't going to be any select board meetings. No, that's not oh, right. right. It's yeah. on the agenda Watch to say, it. yeah. Last year we're just staying here. Yeah, yeah. the, the building schedule. Oh, oh, during the oh, I think construction. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Like, whoa. <laughs> well, we were actually supposed to say it would be great meeting. <laughs> no, we don't. We get that. We were actually supposed to start meeting in May over there. Yeah, yeah, May. Yeah, well, and we're not going to be able to. So we need to update. We can sit out on the lawn with a picnic blanket. Right, and with mm -hmm. the ticks. <laughs> and the text. Right. All right. So, anyways, um, it's all good. yeah, and we've been working on this donor list. We met last Wednesday morning, then we met Wednesday at 
five o'clock the same day to work on the donor list, and that was a couple hours. So there's all kinds of info. I don't know if you saw the spreadsheet. I did. It was one of those kind that makes your head explode. <laughs> What Christine will do is she'll take these names and she runs them through some kind of database that has the history of the giving of some of these funds. But uh, we got to give her more of the names now. We just found out. Right. Uh, yeah. And some of the names then maybe aren't worth putting in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. All right. See you later. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Yep. See you Wednesday. You can leave. Yeah. Yeah. Part of you can leave. Whoa, we're going to do budget now. See you Wednesday. Make your brain explode. See, see you Wednesday. <laughs> see you then. Did you hear about the truck blowing up, Scott? Yeah. The motor. Thank goodness we got a spare. We're not going to buy another one, are we? We got a spare. We don't need to buy another one. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Scott. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> so we are just them. doing so good for like something else, exactly isn't it? Exactly on time, which hardly really ever happens. So, can you guys just sign in, please? Yep. Here's some agendas if you want an agenda. And then just join us. We're going to take the year off. Well, they fail, though. So. All right, are they still talking? No, they're just signing. <laughs> yeah, I was in here today reviewing oh, yeah. We're going to take the day you're out. Hey, how are you? What are you doing? I haven't seen you in forever. Put that camera over that way. <laughs> <laughs> There's my one, Jeff. How is everybody? Hi, hey, Jeff. You must you be Jeff. I'm Jeff. Hold me here. Yeah, join Old us. hockey buddies. Oh, hockey parents. Oh, yeah. Hockey parents. Oh, boy. How old are your kids? Too old. <laughs> you know, one more in school and can't wait to be out. My hockey I'll never player is 21. About again. And how do you really feel about it? I'll tell you how I really feel about everything. I've got two minutes. So to, let's, we just need to get right to, to the issues here. Um, we had a surprise inspection at the East Cal's Recycling Center. Um, they came back with, and the documents are in the folder, and they came back with this list of things, which you and Who I talked about. I sent it to you mm -hmm. with a letter. So I guess we just need to talk and see how do we how do we fix these things. I mean, I know some of them aren't anything that you have any control mm -hmm. over. So, folder upside down. Upside down? Oh, can you rotate it that way? Let me can see. You, can you rotate it? Yeah. I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks fine to me. Is there a way to rotate it? Really? Uh, gotta find something to open it with because it's a it scan. It looks scanned upside down, doesn't it? Yeah, so I need to oh, find an app to open yeah. it with. I scanned it to you upside down. I yes. saved them without reading each one of the summary. <laughs> Try the dots, the three dots. Yeah, what are the three dots over there? Uh, no. There's no rotate on it. Huh? Well, you could download, and then... And I then might be able to if I yeah. do that, if I can pull it up as a PDF. Yeah, so. Is this... Oh, your computer pulls up PDFs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, PDFs can rotate. This yeah, I thought it was a PDF, because I saved it as a PDF. Yeah, but he's got to pull it up in a PDF program, oh. and then he can rotate it. There you go. I know that little arrow. I use it all the time. There you go. Okay. And it's upside down. So, and the, and the state <laughs> sent an email just before we came to the meeting I, right. that um, they, they know that we're working on it because we only had 30 days, mm -hmm. and we only meet twice a month. Right, right. So the timing, they don't give you much time. So I, they're, I don't think they're going to do anything right now, so they know that we're working on it. Um, so I thought we could go through the issues that they laid out mm -hmm. and see if, and this is Bruce Westcott, you know Bruce? Nope. 
Oh. Well, we've never really met. No. But I did talk to you. <laughs> no, I'm about this matter. <laughs> Tiffany. And uh, you know John. I'm Denise, by the way. Cliff Evans, Dallas Select. And I'm Rose Pelchuk. And Katie is our um, administrative right. assistant. So, thanks for coming, Bruce. And, and I just, I mean, so you understand our relationship, you know, we don't consult with them on their inspections, we don't have any control yep. or any foreknowledge. Right. And our goal is just to help, we, we, you know, we get copies of everything that happens in the district, and our goal is to say, here's how, here, here's how we think it might be resolved, and here's how we can help. Right, and that's why I asked you to come. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. just to see if we can work through some of these issues. Um, so let's start with the first one. Fast trash area with food waste left on site at the close of business. Now, my understanding is that Grow Compost is responsible through you folks, CB, when the uh, mm -hmm. Lamont Solid Waste Management District, to remove the food waste. And it sounds like that's not happening on a weekly basis. Does the contract expect that? Or? Yeah. And, and you know, you may see it differently in your experience than what we know, because I'm not there on site, obviously. But, but we have a, we have had a contract with them which expires the end of June because it was a grant funded program for right. the year. And we have a contract and it says they'll do it once a week. And they have it scheduled on a regular basis on Tuesdays. And we've inquired with them if it mm -hmm. would make a difference whether they could come Mondays instead. But of course if they had to get everywhere on Mondays because right. we've dropped mm -hmm. off on Saturdays, they probably couldn't do it. Right, but probably but, it, but the point is is there's no there's no need to stay with them for a minute longer if you don't want to, if you have another solution. Our our obligation to you, our funding goes only through the end of June, so after that there'll be another Right. Are we obligated to take food scraps? How's the lower? Yeah. Well, there's in I I you you received email this afternoon from the state. Right. From from Deborah. Right. And she said food scrap collection is currently voluntary for both fast chat trash and category certification facilities. Um, I dared to reply to her to say in my view, and I'm not a lawyer, it's actually ambiguous in the statute as it is today. And there's a bill which has passed the Senate and has just been read out of the House Natural Resources Committee which removes that ambiguity. To making it mandatory? Yeah. So, so that, it might be mandatory. So for rural, I thought we, there was a conversation you and I talked about at the beginning of the session. That has to do with curbside service in uh, rural okay. and, 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 uh, and, and non-rural areas. But basically, both for you know transfer, the, the idea was to make a level playing field, mm -hmm. so that uh, the, the 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 language in Act 148 talks about convenience. So what the legislature wants to do is to say whether you're a fast trash or a municipal mm -hmm. facility or a, you know any other kind of site, you've still got to accept food scraps. So there's arguably some ambiguity in the law. Mm -hmm. um, we th we think it's mandatory. All the all the transfer stations in our district are doing it. But everybody agreed in the legislature that we should make a minor change in the wording to make sure that it's. So that, frankly, I expect will pass in the next three weeks and takes effect on passage. So I, I think we should act as though it's mandatory to have food scraps collected. So how are we supposed to do that? Well, with a lot of places around the district, like here, we started out by saying, here's a bin, here's signage, Mm -hmm. Here's publicity, and and here's a contractor who will pick it up for you. You know, as an as an approved. Right. You know. But now, once this grant's going to end the end of June. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then what? Well, we've encouraged everybody. What's happening all around the state is people are taking money to take your food scraps, so it ain't free anywhere. So do we have to come up with somebody to do that? Well, you have to. If the, the site has to accept food scraps. And you don't have to charge for it, and there's no regulation on what you would charge. Mm -hmm. But you know you, you're under obligation to accept them and then to dispose of them properly. So can we take a couple steps back, yeah. like, just for clarification. You guys take the recyclables at the end of the day with you. Yes. We do. So, but not the food scraps. Historically, mm -hmm. this was a 
categorical certified facility, categorically certified facility. It's been facility. here since 1854, right? Well, no, no, because when the districts ran it, there were, there were yeah. on-site collection, right. there was an on-site collection and storage bins, facilities there, and that yeah. stuff's all been removed. Yeah. So we don't need a permit anymore for that place because we're just doing fast trash. So really, I mean, that could be had anywhere. Um, you mean the location could the be? The location is just a, just a place where the I mean, parents pull right, over they and do, do their thing. It's historically been our, but in terms of, uh, I, I was going to say, we don't need to renew that cat suit. It's going to be categorical certification because there's nothing okay. well, that's that would demand is. that. I, um, so I think would, it was just still. It so was, then it wouldn't come under the state. I think it had, what, 10 year life in it? So, so we just it, kept, kept it running. We didn't ask to have it revoked, but we could have just said, revoke it. So then we wouldn't need to have the state coming up. Well, then the state wouldn't come them. and be inspecting us as a facility because we're no longer a facility. Okay. So a lot of this stuff falls away because we're actually more highly scrutinized because we're permitted to actually store stuff on site, mm -hmm. but we don't do that anymore. Right. We're permitted as the facility formerly operated, but we don't do that stuff anymore. And if we're just fast trash, then we don't have to take food scraps? Or we do? Well, then it falls to the hauler, correct? How does that work? That's what I was going to ask. With this legislation that's working its way through, is the hauler still going to be obligated to pick up fast trash in rural communities like this? Well, the, the the chain. I don't. I don't have the actual uh, bill language here, and I'm not a lawyer, and you know, et cetera, et cetera. But again, the goal was to was to put everybody on um, to maximize the convenience to the consumers okay. by saying, if you do trash, you've got to do food scraps. So it's, it's making sure but that... But who is the you? If someone's doing fast trash in East Montpelier Village on Saturday morning, yep. like they do, that, that fast trash person has to take food yep. scraps. Right. They're obligated. Yep. They can charge for it. Yep. But they're obligated to provide that right. opportunity. And then they can dispose of it in a number of ways. And, you know, in fact, it doesn't... It doesn't... I mean, and I could be incorrect, and we might want to check with a lawyer, is that... If you're providing a site for it, and you guys are just essentially acting as a, whether there's a contract or agreement or whatever, mm -hmm. um, you could have somebody else there. You could have a local farmer who says, "I want this for my chickens." Mm -hmm. You know, give it with with local local type volumes. You know, rural volumes. And again, there's I got a three-page memo from Diane Botfeld at the Agency of Agriculture because there's a little bit of. Uh, you know, who's got the potato between right. DEC and agriculture right. around right. agricultural uses, but depending upon volume, you know, feeding it to the chickens is perfectly is perfectly right. good at low volume. Right. Right. So just like when we were in the food scrap hauling business, mm -hmm. we had people who said, well, in the winter, haul it away because it freezes, but in the farmer, or in the summer, you know, a farmer right. would use it. Right. right. What's that bill, what's that bill number, do you know? S-285. It was, it was passed by the Senate. Mm -hmm. It was read out of the Committee on Natural Resources in the House Friday. So it will be on the House calendar tomorrow. I'm sorry, it's not on the Tuesday calendar. Mm -hmm. It'll be on the Wednesday calendar. But that depends on, because it also has our favorite topic, bottles, in it. Oh. It may end up going to the Appropriations Committee or the uh, Ways and Means Committee around the, the, the unclaimed nickels as cheats. So we don't we don't know the legislative right. path exactly. Right. Uh, but the issue of this particular provision that makes clear that everybody's mm -hmm. got to take the food scraps was put in by the Senate. There was no debate on it in the House. So assuming the bill passes in any form at all, that's going to be part so, of it. So John, what you're suggesting then could be our answer. Well, I'm, what I'm suggesting is we got to that we just have we, it as a fast track. Well, we the, we I mean, don't have that. it anymore. It's what I'm saying. We we allow someone to use our property, right. but we are not part of it. The operation. No, no, no. It becomes a private right. operation, and then it falls to the hauler. Just and I don't, where, where's the Cal Elementary School scraps? Where are they going? Do, do, do we have a contract with Grow? I know? believe that Grow's picking up. Yeah. So so just for your edification, oh. before you came to the district. I used to pick that stuff up for free. And then they got a new uh, custodial staff there, and I don't think he liked me or something. He took it away from me. 
and I used to feed my critters that food waste. I picked it up every week, and uh, but he's no longer working there. Right. He lasted about a year. Um, so gross, and now the school's paying for that again. But right. it would be great if we could find a local, local user. I, I no right. longer have poultry, um, but um, it'd be great if we could find someone who was yeah. interested in that, and then we could combine. What the well, and, and in you know, the long cost. term, we're working with a number of schools doing on-site composting. There you go. And you know, it takes it takes some equipment, it oh. takes some training, it takes some commitment on part of local staff. Yeah. But we're also working with some community compost sites. Mm -hmm. You know, and as we move into Act 148 territory, and again, we're all rural here, so you know, whether it's the skunks or the chickens, most right. of us just can throw it out. But, you know, there, this whole idea of having small localized facilities where people can take it, um, and, and, you know, the, some of the schools are getting the position where they're actually generating, you know, reusable compost out Do you know if Cal's is working on that? Uh, no, they're not. But, you know, it's, there, there are a couple of schools in our district, so we're trying to provide, you know, models and, you know, right. kind of the cookbook right. for how to do that, and involving the custodial staff, and the kids and the uh, lunchroom staff. So and and you know obviously they make so much sense in a lot of towns where the school is the center of a lot of things. Mm -hmm. that ideally, if they could become you know right. centers for that, that's fine. Right. You want to say something? Well, I kind of have a question that pertains to us. So it's my understanding at the drop that compost didn't really take off there. You know, people, the nice. first couple of weeks people brought some and then you know this much in the barrel and yeah. I'm supposed to pay them 20 bucks a barrel to come and get this much. Yeah. Then even if I'm charging, if I'm charging somebody 20 bucks for this much of compost, so therefore it's been costing me at a loss. So yeah. You guys can't haul away with you. No. Uh, well, I'm not bringing food scraps back to my house. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, don't, I don't want the critters that it yeah, comes right. to my house. I mean, I have, and that's where we run our business out of. So mm -hmm. sure. that's not really realistic. Well, realistic for me, you know, like the town of Hardwick, they have some in the town, some yeah. barrels and set up in the town. I don't know who does it, but mm -hmm. if it's black dirt, does that black dirt, they have them set up where people can dump them and they just come yeah, and one of their, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One, one of their issues is that <laughs> they're, we've been sponsoring that for a number of years, but actually we're pulling back from that. Mm -hmm. And we met with their select board Thursday night. And, you know, they're sort of saying, well, you know, if we do this, we kind of want to move to the town garage, you know, so th that's in play there. Mm -hmm. But the difference there is that those those totes are open 24-7. Right. Right. You know, whereas... But, you know, their they facility is not they smell 24 7, 7, 7. <laughs> <laughs> They shouldn't be in town. So, I mean, you can't put them, I mean, I guess you can put them up there 24-7, but but then that, woods with well, bears, but I was gonna say, then they're gonna get visited by all the. I mean, and members. that was something I brought up to Kathleen. Kathleen, yeah. when I talked to her, is like I told her this place was out in yeah, the sure. middle of nowhere. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of scary being up there by yourself, just doing the trash yeah. business, though. Well, it's too bad. Know. This is a requirement for rural towns. You know, we spoke about this in January, and I was hoping there was gonna be a different approach depending on you know population density and availability of open land we I mean, people here they can throw in a pile I mean I got a compost bin I thought it was so, within so many miles yeah I don't I don't know what it is anymore well again there's some provisions in the law that have to do with haulers who are doing curbside pickup and then there's a there's an there's essentially an exemption which says like grow is a place where Theoretically, if you collected, you know, if you ran routes and picked up people's, you know, food scraps, you could call up Grow and have a contract to take through them. And there's a requirement there, but if you don't have a Grow within so many miles, mm -hmm. then, you know, you're not required. But that all has to do with if you're doing curbside pickup. Okay. You know, fast okay. trash is what? Yeah. There's no, there's no out. Yeah. Not. Well, wait a minute. I, I'm Doesn't sorry. I, I should know that. Um, there may be, but first of all, it's only short term. Because all this, is, is, yeah, all this is, yeah, all this is changing in oh. 2020. Right. So you know, I mean, I, I want you to do something that works for you in the short term, but right. know that it may be changing. I guess it would be good if we get the barrel somehow. I mean, if it was just a small 
small barrel, if it's small amounts, we just have buckets, maybe we could just have somebody volunteer to take it to the school right. and just dump it in there but then, on Saturday. Okay, so I guess that. my concern right now is the letter we got from the state, how we fix the problems that we have. Right, but this is the issue that is going unresolved. Here. Right. I don't know what the solution is. I don't either. Well, if, if, I, if I just school. support what John is saying, I mean, the, 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 essentially, I think the vision is that, you know, there's really networks, you know, there's capillary systems feeding, and mm -hmm. just like we have somebody in Montpelier who comes by in a small truck, you know, and comes in and picks up the bucket and, you know, and takes it out, and that's viable when there's routes that they can run and enough customers right. in the city. But here you're talking about, you know, essentially one collection point one morning a week or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like, but the idea that, okay, people bring their individual buckets, there's some mechanism to collect the fee because there's going to be some cost to dispose of it. And then there's not so much that somebody can't come and just dump that in something in the back what, of the pickup. What if, okay, like so, and this legislation might be good for conversation if it's not too late over at the State House, but what if, like, uh, with the Perrys, they, they, have, they pick up the trash, but there's a sign there that says food waste if we worked out an arrangement school. You could take that to the elementary school. It's, they have a bin back there, um, and that's where you should take your food waste, Cal's residence. Mm -hmm. And that, would that be an allowed alternative, or, or does it have to be at that site? Well, so then someone has to take the bucket the, over the driving, there. The, the driving word in the statute is convenience. Well, that's, you know, it's right in the same town. Yeah. And, and, and so I don't know how the state would interpret that as a solution okay. that relates to this particular mm -hmm. site. Okay. But right now, Grow Compost is through the end of June, correct? Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be picking up what's there mm -hmm. and providing lockable totes, with their, which there aren't. Not lockable. Or sealable, I thought it said in... Um, some of the information that she said they were supposed to be lockable. Well, if we left them there, you know, it, this is what I'm thinking aloud here. This is not what's going to yeah. happen necessarily, but I'm thinking we have the Callis Elementary School parking lot that sits there empty on Saturday mornings. And if we relocated this fast trash pickup mm -hmm. to the, you know, maybe the, as you face the school, the far right side of that parking lot, they already have the compost right. being collected for the school mm -hmm. there. The, if we could work out an arrangement with the school, we'd have to have that conversation. Yeah. And maybe we, we'd report to the, the state that we're working on a, an alternative set of solutions. Right. And the Perrys could set up a Lightning Ridge Road, you know where the elementary yeah. school is, right? That's a and good thought. And they could set up there. Yeah. It gets, us, gets people away from that former landfill turned stump dump, turned illegal right. dump, whatever you want. Because people still see no that looking. as a callous dump. And then we could close that off, and then we could have a, uh, at the elementary school, yep. there's a lot of oversight there. No one's going to dump there. There's people there all the time. And and then the compost could mm -hmm. be directed. They already have the big compost bins behind. Where is that compost? Is it behind They're the in the back here? where the chips go. Yeah, okay. chip well, well, that's a thought. I, that yeah. might be a solution to a lot of our ills here. Yeah. So. I don't want to speak for the state, but I think that part of the issue you got going here that's pretty unique is you're on a damn cliff, you know, because of the, because of the history of it. Right. And so I... I dare say, and, I, and I'm not speaking for me, you should absolutely say, what, look at what they have on paper, but I think their big fear about the whole site is, you know, a bear can tip a toad full of food over the site, but also tires, air conditioning, yeah. well, that's, you know, that's, that's yeah. part of the problem. It used yeah. to be yeah. a landfill. Yeah. Yeah, yep, it did. And, it and so, sure, you can put, you can build a wall, you know, to borrow a phrase, right. you know, to keep stuff from going over, but that's maybe an over, over the top solution. Or, yeah. And you know, getting the whole operation away from that yeah. site, they might have a different mindset. Yeah. You know, if it's at the school, right. people might be more respectful about yeah. not dumping stuff there that doesn't yeah. belong there, because it's at the school. And but then if they do, then the school is going to be like, well, now we got to get this stuff out of here. So I mean, there's. What What are your hours, Roger? Eight to noon. Eight to noon. Oh, well, I was going to say. Part of the issue is, you know, quantity. Grow picks up by the tote. Mm -hmm. So I guess, you know, that what the, the trash level that you, the, the food scrap level that you've got coming in. It's not enough. And my conversation with Grow was that, 
you know, unless it picks up, it's not really cost effective yeah, for either because, one of us to be doing yeah, it. Yeah, because right. their costs are obviously <laughs> yeah. stock based, you know. And so the point is they've got a contract per tote with the school, and the volume that would be added to it and the school's cost from this may be... It's insignificant, and it's for all the taxpayers, and the taxpayers be putting into a taxpayer-funded facility, so... Right. It all comes out right. of the same pockets. So. so that may be a good solution. I mean, yeah. Another one I talked about was if you're going to keep that, you know... The, the cat and raccoon and skunk problem, you might be get, uh, able to get around with some bungee cords. Yeah. There may be lockable totes, quote, but we haven't seen anything that's really reliable. And it's not going to be bear proof. No, right. you know. The raccoons will tip that thing over and well, if it's apart. Well, you know, if it's closed and it's solid, maybe they won't rip it apart and lock it over and boot it. But if we were able to move it, for your raccoons. suggestion, it would solve our it would other solve, issues. It would solve the other issues. The illegal dumping issues. But uh, the other, you know, if you kept that site, the other thing is that I know the state has worked, you know, because this has been going on all over the state, with mm -hmm. different sites, different needs, but having a lockable shed that that tote goes into. Yeah, we used to have a shed uh, there. You know, we used to years ago. Then the they left garbage yeah. all around it. Yeah. Right, that's what happened. They, right? they left garbage all around it. I used to, yeah. yeah, I used to volunteer up there when it was run by... The district. the district. I used to volunteer on Saturdays up there. So I got to figure out what the trigger thresholds are. I mean, the state usually has like up to a certain amount is exempt. I can't. I used to actually run this program, the comp state composting program, years ago. Um, but there's a lot that's changed. But you know, there's a threshold where you have that site at the school might have to be permitted just by virtue of collecting the the. The to. compost. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah, I don't and know. I'm, but it's such a small amount. But I want to make sure mm -hmm. that we don't open up another can. The can so of worms, I need right. to talk to the state to see what the. Well, and we also need to think about. And Kathleen sent some information about a grant. I mean, even if we don't use it anymore for the fast trash, people are still going to put stuff there, which is not obviously your well, problem. Well, we got to. So we may have we to gotta put, put a fence dirt up. Dirt piles and fence it off. And, just close that I was going to say, do you have like cable or boulders or something across the front of it? I don't know. Or those cement. big cement, those nothing. big, what are those Jersey yeah. barrier things? It would look pretty bad, but it would yeah. send the message, right? Jersey yeah, barriers? We just put dirt just piles. Just give them something like <laughs> We could actually make it nice. We could actually bring in right. topsoil and put grass and put some swing set there or something. <laughs> I don't know. Kids go out to swim off. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, that's, I mean, because I know, I, I don't use the site, but I know it, you know, and drive by it a lot, and I, that was my thought, was that, you, you know, if you think long term, that seems to be your big choice, is do you really want to, what activity do you want to have at that site mm -hmm. in the long term, Right. and is there an alternative yeah. place for this, yeah. you know? And if you make it nice, so it's no longer thought of as a dump site, it's a green place with some picnic tables, people aren't going to dump trash there anymore. Right. Yeah. It's going to be the picnic ground. So, okay, yeah. so, back to the issue. How do we respond to the state on this? I, I can write up something that we're exploring Other alternatives uh, such as shutting mm -hmm. this site down. I mean, I can talk. Relocating off the fast trash operations to right. another location. We need I to can have talk a to the school. Yeah, I can talk to this. I can have an initial conversation with Kat about it. That'd be great. And see, um, from my we end, we do need their permits from the school board right. actually. I, I, I've got to tell you, I think that the state really wants to work with people in this situation. Yep. Yeah, so that's evident. Of, you know, they, yep. they give you 30 days, but I think that if there's, if there's portions of their letter to you that you can respond to right now, mm -hmm. you ought to do it. You know, give them a partial response on these yep. points and then say, we're working on this and this and yep. this. And, 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 you know, and then keep in touch with them about mm -hmm. what the progress is. Yeah, I didn't get the, uh, I didn't get the impression they were one of the hammer on us. Her email back to us was, was nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but I just know we need to respond. Okay. So, do we ask for an extension? Well, we, we well, can, can I, we I, ask I, for an extension? I, I'm not, quite frankly, I, the state's not going to bring enforcement action for a bucket of banana peels. No, probably not. Carrots, I would think they have better course, things to do. You know, I, I, I don't think. I think they, they have to go out. Their routine is if you're a licensed, uh, permanent facility, they have to do a periodic inspection. inspections. So well, I think get rid of the licensed facility, right, they're not going to come around anymore. Right, so how that's do number we, one. Right. Not that we're trying to evade anything, but they brought these issues to our attention. We're, we're, we're taking notice. We're looking at shutting 
the location down as one option. We're not sure if that's going to happen. Right. And how do we get rid of the licensed facility piece? We just uh, request, well, well, first off, if we close the site down, then it's moot. You right, know, but can, if we, in the meantime... But we can request that the... Uh, certification? This categorical certification be uh, rescinded. Okay, that's what I want. That's one rescinded. of the things I would want to do... I can write these letters. Right off. You know. and, and my only comment on that is, given, you know, Act 148, and let alone amendments to it, I, I, I don't know that you're... I'm not saying you're not right about that, but there may be more moving parts. No, you have a right to not run a facility. Yeah. You have a right to not... If you're exempted under the law, you have a right to take advantage of the exempted, you know, you know that option. Yeah. And, so. and, and li yeah, and likewise, as far yeah. as I know, you guys have the right to set up anywhere you have a, you know, right. a, a site that, that wants you to set it up. Right. So when, without getting any. Yep. Yeah. When you guys went belly up and we went in, we took over Hardwick and this one here. Yeah. yeah. And we didn't take over Hardwick where you guys were. These guys bailed us out. Yeah. Yeah. So would you yeah, have any objection to time, right? Right. relocating no, to the matter, school? It don't matter where we Tell me, how was that work on putting the school up on the ground? Though? Say what? I didn't hear what you said, sir. I don't know. I watched, I watched everybody else do it. I didn't hear what you said. Because we collect the trash in a roll-off that we actually set on the ground. As long as you take it away with you at the end of the and day. And we didn't know if it had to be on a truck. On a truck. If you could put it it on the used to be my, my <laughs> unless they changed it again. It used to you be know. had to be on a truck, and then they changed the rule to say as long as you take everything as with as you it's at the you, it can be end of that out. day. Okay. You know. So that that's the only clarification right. we right. would have to have for that. Right. Is, it used you know, to be we, had to be on the wheels. Roll 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 you guys. We yeah. use trucks everywhere else. Yeah. Um, I, and just to go back to something you said earlier, I mean, it's a very short-term solution if you wanted to. Um, if you say. We don't want we don't want to deal with it anymore, you know, and have Grove picking it up because it costs a lot given the volume. Yeah, we would take the same money that we'd be paying Grow, and if you got somebody with a pickup truck that wants to come by at noon on Saturdays and take it down to the school, you know, if you want to do a short term. I mean, for the remaining. Yeah, for the remaining, we'd yeah. be happy to pay that person instead. It doesn't sound like there's enough. Even there's no there's no volume. According. I don't know what Seamus says. Seamus has told me that he, I don't think he's really had anything. Of course, what they Rose showed they was couldn't really get nothing. up there because it wasn't plowed and they couldn't get in. And that's so not I, the case. And it, uh, but was, if they don't like the no, road, there was no or bait. Or they were buried much no ways. I will admit they were. I will they say were that. plowed in. And oh, they were. Yeah. So they couldn't get them out. And, and I'll tell you, a lot, oh, okay, a lot of plowed times up there, the town don't plow it. That, uh, the t old town guy that used to work for you guys. Ed Rowell. Ed, yeah. Ed Rowell? Ed Rowell, his yeah. boy goes up there and plows a lot of time with a tractor. Huh. Okay. Um, and I know he won't plow them in, but the problem is yeah. the town goes into that one way plow. Yeah. To try to plow a facility like that right there. Right. And you know what happens with a one way plow, it just don't work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, so it, it, talking to Seamus, it's my understanding that it's really not, yeah. not going anywhere. Right. As far right. as the economy, I mean, people out, and if they're going to compost, they compost. As I said, at their yard. Yeah. Yeah. You know, That's on their own. They're right. not going to pay a dollar a bucket to get rid of compost That's when right. they can compost That's in right. their own facilities. And that's where right. great law for cities, but not so much right. for this kind of an area. No, it's not. That's yeah, it the makes problem. no sense at all. And it's, you know, it's, one size doesn't fit all. And, mm -hmm. Right, and it's not. Cost effective for grow to come up here. And I ain't the idea the state is killing us on the garbage. How's that? What are they doing? <laughs> we just went up $29 a ton. We're paying $89 a ton. Not even district. $89 a ton to get rid of recycling. Well, it's the Chinese who are killing us. The Chinese don't free. want it. That's yeah, but the, but the state well, shouldn't yeah, get on everybody. It's free. Right. I don't think we're here to talk about that. Yeah, no, no, we're not. you got to add it um, to your bill. It's higher. Yeah, yeah, it is. And then everybody complains, but. All right, so we got the food waste, the animal activity. And your trucks, you got, you checked all your hydraulic fittings, there's no leakage or... No. So, I mean, it could have been someone just turning around well, and they drove yeah, it, it and then we get right. blamed for that yeah, but, too. You know, you but know? it might have leaked on there, but when you come in the middle of the winter and there's ice on the ground, you drop a teaspoon of oil like down there and it looks like it looks jet like clamp that was there and shot into it and just struck yeah, oil. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, the state knows that. Yeah. 
And we can, and there's no way I can afford new trucks like the state's got. Yeah. There's no way possible. Right. You know, a trash truck, new trash trucks, two hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Yeah. Oh, I bet. Yeah. You know, it, it just don't work that way. Yeah. And then we got the debris at the edge of the wood. Throw a piece of cardboard under the truck leaf. and park it. <laughs> right, or Seriously, else. Seriously, yeah, throw it in the back. Yeah. So I think we got the bases covered, and I think yeah. we, I think we have a plan going forward, and we'll. So we'll we'll kind of yeah. keep you guys in the loop. Yeah. All you guys. Okay. Yeah. But, but you know, particularly if you're what you're saying, Tiffany, is that the feedback you get is there's not much food stuff there. No, right? no, I don't think we're collecting a whole lot of food so waste. Can, right. so when we just stop it's it. the, the picture that I saw. There was like can we just this temporarily much until we bill? find out whether or not the school well, is going to can we just say we're not going to take food waste there anymore? Well, it's you might as well let it go until June. They got a grant to pick it up for nothing. Right, why don't we just not? Yeah, well, or like I said, if you have somebody locally who you want to pay, you know, just like, by the time we figure that out, it's going to be July 1. Right, right. by the time we find somebody to do that and be sure that they're going to do it, can we just say we're not going to take food waste? That's my question. It sounds we like just, we can until the new law. Because we can just, pull, we can just pull the sign. Nobody's going to, nobody's going to harass you about it. In my view, the statute currently makes clear that everyone should take food waste. Oh, I see. But as I said, in the bill, there's language that make you know that makes clear that it's it really they understand it's somewhat ambiguous. So, so the state would. So I wonder if the state, in our response, is going to say the same thing as you that they don't think it's ambiguous that we got to do it. Well, well you know, she says spend. right here, she says food scrap collection is currently voluntary okay. for fast so trash we, we and collect it. category yeah. certification. So, you know, if you want to call her on that and say that's your choice, uh, as far as I, I, I can't yeah. say that's wrong. So we'll, we'll suspend that for until the interim right, until, until we, we figure, find another location. We out. We're committed to it, but that right now we're... But I but I can tell you that the, the, the stat, the bill that's in... in moving through right now. It's likely right. to pass in two or three weeks, and it says upon an act. Right. Yeah. So, <coughs> so I, I'm just curious. Okay, so I, I know we have to go, right, Chair, but, but who pushed for rural communities to collect food waste? I mean, were rural haulers coming in there saying this is nuts? I'm sure they were. Well, I yeah. know Casella was saying it was nuts. I was in a committee one day, and yeah, but that again is all about people, you know, haulers who are who are running routes. You know, they're saying that you know, they're, if they were, if they run rural routes, they're very sparse. So there's just there's no way to make money because the people right. are so few. Right. So that's where the haulers have placed their primary objection, because in, 19, in 2012 the original statute was passed said statewide, if you yeah. if you do curbside, you're going to have to start taking food, food scraps. Right effective July 2017. Right. Last year they punted for a year. In this current bill they're going to punt again to 2020. Oh, okay. And they're going to, and we've raised the issue of density, and that would then, right, that then in sense. terms of our district, the densest housing is obviously just Barry and Montpelier and a very little bit of Barry Town. Right. So it could be that come 2020 there will be a requirement that if you haul roots in those areas, you'll have to Offer to pick up food scraps. Not Hardwick. Not no, not Hardwick. No. No, it's not dense enough. Really? Yeah. All right. Thank so. <laughs> so it sounds like we have a plan. Okay. Yeah. Very good. Thank you guys yep. for coming in. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thanks. Thank Thanks, you. Bruce. Yeah. See you, John. We'll be in touch. <laughs> All right. Here. You'll be talking to her. Thank yep. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you mean the boss? Yeah, no, I'll go after six. <laughs> where's, the, where's the short cemetery? The short cemetery. That's just down, not, not. Oh, I don't remember which one. Is, it's, it's, one. is it Singleton? Robinson is, is this way. Fairview 1 and Fairview 2 is in is East Palace. The short Palace. The one that's up The short on, is. Uh, Jack Hill, is that No, that's um, Ainsworth. Oh, okay. So I short. Think, is, if I go back out to 14, what's the right hand turn? Is that Singleton? Yes. Yeah, I think, is it out? Is, it is out that out? the one? Is it there? It could that's, be. No, there's no cemetery on Singleton Road. That's where you live. Well, there's that hidden one in the woods by... Yeah, but no, that's where it's said. No, where are you looking to go? Short cemetery. What, tonight? No, but I just want to know where Oh, we can find out and let you know. We'll send you a memo. 
I'll send you an email. No, I can go to find a grave and it puts it on a map, but I didn't zoom in oh. far enough. So find a grave has it. I'm looking for some old callus. I'm looking for one of the original callus select board members. Uh -oh. And cows that might still be alive. <laughs> <laughs> Could still be serving. <laughs> That's how long Denise and John have been on the board. So you know. They don't let you die if you're on the select board. In short, cemeteries with two T's. Yeah, I know. I know that. I'll, see, I'll find out, Bruce. And no, I, well, I can look. Really, okay. find, find a grave is a great site. Wilbur C. Done. Short. Wilbur C. Short. You're looking it up? Yeah. Find a grave. All right, thank you. All. Thank you. Good yeah, night. Thanks for coming, help. Bruce. We appreciate and, it. And uh, you know, just if you, yeah, my advice: deal with the state in writing. Right. That's what I want to do. Yeah. And yeah. send us a copy, and we're happy to run interference if there's yeah anything we can do. That's great. Thank thanks, you. Bruce. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Okay. Budget financial update. Um, Sandra's going to be giving us monthly budget updates, just like Donna used to do. I reviewed it. I talked to her about it today. We're at the end of April, and we're at about 78% of our budget, which is just about right on. Mm -hmm. So um, as we get closer to the end of the fiscal year, we'll you know review it even more. The plan right now is that um, Renee from Father Gilsa Valley is supposed to come in and help Sandra run something that they need to look at the financials to help they're going to run this report Melanie's on vacation for this week when she gets back next week she's going to finish up the FY17 um, <coughs> the close out of FY17 mm -hmm. um, and then going forward Renee from Father Gill is supposed to do like the auditor type work. I've asked Sandra, and maybe I'll contact her as well. We need to know how much it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. And then we would get Sullivan and Powers or somebody to do the annual outside right. audit. Yeah. So that's kind of where things are financially. Um, the orders are all ready to sign. Um, the words. I was in here today and did these. There was a couple of things that I questioned um, because it had to do with cemetery payments. And when we get in Emmerich, it won't be this way. But right now, it, like it comes out of the town budget, mm -hmm. and then it gets taken out of the cemetery budget. I mean, yeah. it's all the money's all in one big pot. Mm -hmm. But when we get in Emmerich, we can segregate those amounts. Okay. And we may want to have the cemetery commission have their own checking account. Mm -hmm. right. So it's not mixed in with right. town or highway right. funds. Mm -hmm. So just think about that. I think that's exactly what we need to do. Right. Yeah. Um, and Sandra, we, we stopped having to sign yeah, the, the road, highway orders. The highway yeah. orders but mm -hmm. now she put um, it on there. It, it makes sense. I mean, I don't know. I'm not clear why we ever completely stopped. But... It makes sense for us to sign these highway orders. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. okay. um, if we could sign those as well, that would be helpful, along with the others. But Sandra's doing a fine job. Is everything else was good to you? Yep. Yep. Everything else was good. I did a whole, you know, list of the check numbers. No checks missing. <laughs> no, no errors on the checks. It was all great. Did a great job. Wonderful. Yep. Yes. Yes. Yep. Very good. Um, if we want Sandra to come in at some point, you know, I don't know that we need to. And I think when we start getting closer to the Nemric conversion date, we may want to just have her come in and tell us how it's going. And but I'm here. I'm in here often enough now that I just ask her when I'm here. Mm -hmm. well, I hope that the road crew is more aware now that snow season is over that we're trying to limit them to 40 hours i saw there was a lot of overtime in there but we have had some pretty wild weather yes. the last couple of weeks right. right. and then we had that weird snow and alfred wasn't going to plow but then he got some calls so then he went yeah. out and plowed and it, yeah. you know you and the elevation you know you said it and i live up you know the elevation really does make, it a, does difference. make a difference you know 
I did it over there uh, where it oh, says select board. Oh. oh. You did it in the Are proper you, place? You, mean you, you read it? Yeah. I read that yellow so sticky note. So put a sign where Rose did. Don't do what we did. Right. See? Select board. Go over there. We, looks like we have three road commissioners now. That's right. We do. <laughs> um, okay. So you heard about we have to, at the beginning of the year when we organize, we have Thanks, to pick sir. our meeting locations. And I think we said we were going to meet at the town hall starting in May for as long as we can. We're not going to be yeah, able to do it at all. Yeah. Not even bail bit. So we just need to... We'll just stay here? We'll just stay here. And I've already told Judy. Mm -hmm. So she's going to be putting those on the calendar. Okay. Um, 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 okay. Appointments. Did you all see the little... Um, well, you spoke to me when John said, and you're not having select board meetings over there anymore. I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> for <laughs> nice for a little grant money? <laughs> what? That's my Every big issue. Week. You know me. Right. I can't let it go. All right. Strictly a cultural facility here on out. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> tap dancing. If we, tap, if we have a tap dancing select board, you can do it. But. Right, only on the tables. <laughs> All right, so I put together this list of appointments and reappointments. So let's just yeah, I saw that. Yeah. go through it a little quickly. You could open that up and pass it around, John. Okay, Wilson's willing to continue as animal control. That's one year. And Katie, I'm going to ask you to update the spreadsheet when we get sure. all this done. Okay. I did hear back from Ann Tulin this afternoon, who's willing to continue as second animal control. Constable Wilson for one year. We second constable's vacant. Emergency plan coordinator Toby for one year. And I'm doing this because I'm going to make this into a motion. Um, I went to a training, and so didn't Cliff last Thursday night at CVRPC, and we can have like an assistant coordinator, and Nick Emlin is really involved in this, and I'd like to get Nick more involved and have him work to come up with like a tabletop, mm -hmm. tabletop drill or tabletop presentation of, uh, of an event. And the emergency management people and CVRPC are willing to work with us mm -hmm. on some kind of a an exercise, like a training kind of thing. Not We wouldn't have to go out tromping in the woods and in the fields and the rivers, but... Um, tabletop. Yeah, that's what they called it, right? Tabletop? Yeah, tabletop. Yeah, where we would all sit Simulation. around and kind of have a practice run in case something happened, how the system works. And they said that we could ask an, somebody to be like an assistant coordinator, so I'm suggesting that we appoint Nick Emlin to that and put them to work. Mm -hmm. um, John's going to be the rep to the new CVRPC Clean Water Advisory Committee. Yep. Greg Pelchek, Inspector of Lumber. And these are all, as I'm going through these, these are all one year. Health Officer Maria Melikos. I have not heard from her yet, so we're going to have to table that until I hear from her. Weir of Coal, Peter Harvey. Um, Vermont State Police Advisory Board, Peter Harvey. Curtis Palm Dam Monitors, Chris Miller, Louis Franco. That's all the one-year ones. So do you want to do it in blocks or as a whole, the whole shebang? I think you should do the one-year separate and then the mm -hmm. other ones. Okay, so that's a motion for the one-year blocks. Is there a second? Yeah, second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Now we'll move on to the other ones. Um, Planning Commission, John McCullough is up. These are for four-year terms, so I'm recommending we reappoint John McCullough to the Planning Commission to a term of 2022. DAB, Design Advisory Board. Karen Lane does not want to be reappointed, so we need to find someone to fill that. David Sheets is looking at, <coughs> he's gonna ask somebody and get back to me. Kurt Jansen is willing to be reappointed. So he would be to the term of 2022. Okay. HPC, it's Jeremy Ingpen, Karen Lane, and Larry Bush. Historic Preservation Commission. Right. So there are three year terms as well. Um, or did I do that oh, right? Jeremy guy. He came in here. 
Did I do that right? If it's 20, it should be 2021, 20, I think, right? Is that okay if I'm going to need to go back for these names? They're going. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. The, the list, I sent you the... Yeah, it's in the... So I can pull them off of there? Right, okay. yeah. Thank you. But I think I'm Thanks. wrong on the historic preservation. If they're three-year terms, it would be 2021, not yes. 2022, right? Right. Okay. So Jeremy Ingpen, Karen Lee, and Larry Bush, three-year terms, 2021. And so Karen Lane, Larry <coughs> Bush, ah. And so which term did you appoint this Jeremy guy to? I don't remember who's he filled when we did it before. Um, 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 um. I wonder. What is he like? Wait, Larry I'm Bush, Karen Lane. It's Jeremy. And do we still have Susan Weber? No. That must okay, be so it. that must be right. the term. Jeremy. Um, I am. Yeah, we appointed him on 12 18 17. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Thanks. All right, Conservation Commission. These are four year terms, and Rose couldn't, I couldn't, and Stephanie couldn't find where we had reappointed Neil Maker and Drew Lamb, whose terms ended in 2017. <laughs> yep. So we need okay. to appoint them to fill out the term that ended in 2017, okay. which would expire in 2021. Okay. That's 20. Drew and Neil. Yep. Four year term. Okay. And then Maddie Morgan, you remember we just appointed her recently, mm -hmm. but she filled an empty spot. Oh. So she would be appointed, reappointed to 2022. Yep. Okay. And Lou Cherry, we haven't heard back from. Development Review Board. Don't worry, Katie. We'll, we I'm going to fill it in, yeah. Yeah, we can okay. we'll fix it. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Steve Owens, I didn't hear back from. So um, we, what, are we going to postpone these appointments? Are we going to wait, wait till we hear, are we hear back from everyone? Or I think we, we should we, do the ones we have. Okay. <coughs> Steve Owens, no response. Barbara Wheaton said yes. Peg Bowen said yes. And Ann Winchester said yes. So that would be three, and Winchester is an alternate, but they're all three-year terms, so they would expire in 2021. Okay. okay. Um, trails Committee. I have not heard back from Charlotte or Gail. Bill Russell said yes, those terms are three years. And if you remember a couple of years ago, I forget what it was, um, we came up with appointments um, back in, two, oh, Terms were instituted in 2014. So for, Bill, for right now, Bill Russell said yes. So he would be reappointed through to 2021. So those are those, and I didn't put swim committee on the front, so we'll do that separate. So that's my slate of all the people I've talked to. So I'd move that we appoint all the listed people that we've received responses from. Is there a second? Second. Okay, any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Hearing none. You just been dying to do that. Yeah. <laughs> All right, swim committee. I forgot they were one years and um, the one year terms, Lisa McCarthy, Dylan Burns, Burns, our own Katie and Lori Grigg have all said yes. I sent um, an email to Mark Whitman's wife, Greta, somebody. I've never met him in the three years I've served, but I think he helps with the dock. Yeah, does that that's right? right, right. So he does stuff. I think he does stuff to install. install. He's a dock right. hand. Yeah. 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 He's all docks on hand. That's yeah. important stuff. Yeah. Um, but I haven't heard back from Greta who was going to talk to Mark. Um, all right. I would move that we reappoint those four swim committee members. Yeah, second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Yes, swimming the season will be coming right up, right, Katie? Yeah. Okay, so. Okay, so that's what we have on appointments. And minutes. 
And then we're probably going to be going into executive session um, after the minutes. Okay. All right, let's see. Minutes. I had some notes. There's a lot. We have a lot of minutes to do. Um, all right. March 26th, we had a special meeting which included the Cemetery Commission and a regular meeting. Um, we should approve them individually, but that's where we should start. Why can't we just approve the slate? Because I have, there's some typos. Oh, your changes. Yeah. Okay. So on the 26 minutes, down at the number 5A, it says staff transition. And it says to serve as delinquent tax collector for tax year 2018. But that's not, I don't think that's quite right mm -hmm. because we appoint the delinquent tax collector after town meeting. So unless we want to start, and to, if I think of tax season in my brain, it's different than the calendar year. I think it should say calendar year 18. And then maybe we get into the, um, system of appointing the delinquent tax collector at the beginning of every calendar year instead of after town meeting because it used to be town meeting why don't we just say for the term effective, i was going to say why effective. do we have to do it every year do we have to we haven't ever set a term i don't know can we well, why don't we just say effective now until until she's not until effective town anymore. meeting town meeting next year we just keep doing that's it. how these other appointments all go they go to, to right one right. town meeting but to remember the reason I think we did it that way because the delinquent tax collector was elected from the floor at town meeting. Now we appoint the delinquent tax collector. Oh. Right? Oh. So we so, can set a term. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. Was, uh, so that's what I'm thinking. Let's just do it as a calendar yeah. year. At the beginning yeah. of every calendar year, we would reappoint or appoint the delinquent tax collector. So I don't, I think we need to just take out the word tax year. Yep. Are you doing it quick for me to do it? Mm, why don't you go ahead? I don't know or not. <laughs> Um, Jen, why did you put this in time. front of me? It's very tempting. I, I was ordered by the chair. <laughs> I, and he always couple, follows orders. I had a couple what you do nibbles. is you slide it over to Katie and make it tempt her. Do you want to have her. some nibbles? Well, I better concentrate on these. Okay, nibbles. she's concentrating. <laughs> um, Let's put it up in front of Cliff's then. Larry had some. Huh? They're good. Well, then you give it to the chair and it's mm -hmm. her problem. Um, I'll have a little bit. Yeah, Jerome, you want some? You want some to go? Oh. I'll go there. Okay. Feed the camera. Right. Feed the camera. <laughs> okay, so that would be regular meeting, special meeting. I think we can do them together. Is there a motion to approve with the changes to the March 26 regular meeting minutes? So moved. Is there a second? Sure. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Two down. Um, hi. We had a special meeting on April 2nd and then a site visit on April 2nd. The site, the special meeting was um, personnel, that's when we met with Alfred. Let me go to that one first. Yeah. Well, no, we did the site visit first, didn't we? We did the site visit. Yeah, it doesn't first. matter. Um, and April 2nd wasn't a regular select board meeting night, so those were both. I didn't do minutes for the site visit. Was I supposed to? I think you did. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah you did. You did. Yeah, you did. did I? Yeah. Yeah. You did. Yep, you did. Oh, because that's the thing at 7.15. Right. No, we, <coughs> we've got it here, though. Oh, okay. As long as it's there. I can pull that up if you no, want. No, no, no. I don't even remember Yeah, doing. This, this is the... Um, this is the special meeting right. after the site visit. Right. Okay. And... I didn't have any changes to those. I didn't see anything on the site visit one, and anybody had any changes either. So I think we're good. Mm -hmm. All right. So is there a motion to approve the April second special meeting and site visit meeting minutes? Yes, so moved. Is there a second? All second. those. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Regular meeting and special meeting. On April 9th, we met with Alfred. Before our regular special, before our regular select board meeting, and let's see, I don't think I had any. Oh, well, I'll talk to Katie afterwards. Um, I didn't have any changes to those minutes. Did anybody else? All 
The, oh, I know. The only thing on the April. Can you go back up, Katie? No, no, no. Down to where the culvert stuff is. Kent Hill culvert. Because it talks about other culverts, and I wonder if we could just <coughs> start a new paragraph when we start to talk about the other culverts, which was the. The operations manager has mm -hmm. also reported that the town received two. Maybe to start a new paragraph. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't look like it's part of the discussion on Kent Hill. It's Are doing a funny. I'm you frozen? No, I'm moving it, but you're looking at It's just taking oh. time for them to talk. It's doing a funny formatting thing also. You'll see it catching up, but I'll fix it because it has to go back to Word. It, mm -hmm. I'll oh, fix okay. the formatting, but see how it made number eight and it's there. Oh yeah. So it looks funny, but I'll fix that. Okay. All right. So there's been a motion and a second to approve the April 9th minutes, right? Yes. Okay. All those. Second. Like, John, you gotta. Um, okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. April 12th. That was our meeting with EMFD. Um, Rose took the minutes, they were fine. I didn't have any issues. So is there a motion to approve those minutes? We didn't go all right. Hmm? Go. Yeah, well, yeah. It went well, it went well. They really... The reporting is much cleaner. They hired um, Father, Gil. Father Gil and Valley to come in and take charge of it, which is Perfect. Yeah, which yeah. was a very good move for them to do. Yeah. Good. So I think going forward, things will be a lot better. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. Yeah. So I make a motion to approve those special minutes. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Then we have the minutes from the 16th. That was when we met with the road crew. That was like one of the best things I think we've done. Oh, wow. Yep. So where there's a line, it's Joanne, J-O-A-N-N-E, Garton, G-A-R-T-O-N. J-O-A-N-N-E. Garton, G-A-R-T-O-N. Okay. For the, that resilient back road. Right, right. right. And For some parts. But when we went and met with each of the road crew members individually, didn't we go into executive session? I don't is, think so, because there was nobody else there. Is, isn't that did. a Forest and Parks program she works for? Mm -hmm. So you may mm -hmm. want to clarify the uh, Vermont Forest and Parks Resilient Backroads program. Is that what it's called? Yeah. Yeah, you're right. It's okay. through the state, Forest and Parks. State of Vermont, Forest and Parks. Resilient Backroads. State of Vermont Department of Forest and Parks. Or just say Vermont Forest and Parks. Vermont Forest and Parks. Okay. Department. I thought, I guess Thank I thought we went into Parks. executive session. Does anybody else remember? Don't. No, maybe we didn't then. But I mean, we really didn't have to because there was no. nobody else there. Mm -hmm. We right. just said, we're going to no, talk to everybody. No, we did. We just. Okay. Yeah, individually. All right. Anything else? Anybody have anything else for those minutes? Are you ready to make a motion to approve them? Really, the whole thing was personnel related. Right. The entire meeting. So the whole thing was technically an executive session meeting. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so. so I'll make a motion to approve them. Are there, is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. All right. Um, now we can get, Jim was not available to be here, but we can get him on by phone. But we'll need a motion to go into executive Jim Barlow, session. our attorney? Yes. We'll I a make a motion. motion we go into executive session at 840 for Her. the purpose of discussing um, attorney-client communications with our attorney, Jim Barlow, via speakerphone. Yep. Right. So we can get him on phone if we need to. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, Thank, you. Thank you. you. I'll catch up with you. This is pretty cool. Did you like that? Uh, okay, like oh, whole, whole five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. I like it. Thank you. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Or they pay me the big bucks.
เกิด